Hey guys, in this lesson we'll be looking at the properties of water based on intermolecular forces and how, the, how these intermolecular forces are going to affect different properties that we see in water but not other substances. Behaviours such as the ability of water to form droplets and to flow are a result of intermolecular forces uh, that exist between molecules of water. So in between molecules of water, we have hyd mostly hydrogen bonds because of the electronegative oxygen and the uh, bound to a slightly positive hydrogen, ion, a hydrogen atom. And therefore we're going to have a slight charge and get polarity on the molecule. Uh, various terms are used to describe the behaviours of water and we'll be looking at cohesion today, adhesion, surface tension and viscosity. These properties enable water to perform specific life-maintaining functions, uh, such as the ability of a 50 meter uh, gum tree to move water from the soil in the, in the ground all the way up to the leaves in the top of the tree. And this is a result of a combination of forces involving adhesion and cohesion. The form and structures of aquatic animals in is in response to properties of water, specifically uh, viscosity and surface tension. Um, but we'll be looking firstly at cohesion. So this is a force that acts between like particles. So between water molecules or between sugar molecules, things like that that are the same. Hydrogen bonding between water molecules is an example of a cohesive force because it's between the same molecule. Dispersion forces between oxygen molecules and dipole-dipole forces between hydrogen and chloride, mo hydrogen chloride molecules are cohesive because oxygen and oxygen and hydrogen chloride and hydrogen chloride being like and like. Water, because of its strong hydrogen bonds between its molecules, has strong cohesive forces and strong cohesion. So therefore it tends to form spherical droplets when placed on other surfaces. However, adhesion is um, forces of attraction between unlike particles, so water and glass or oxygen and hydrogen chloride. These forces are an example of an adhesive force, like I said, water and glass. And the nature of the meniscus, so remember the, the surface of the water, when we look to measure how much water we're pouring out into a measuring cylinder, we need to look at the meniscus, so the little curve the water forms. Um, so when the meniscus is placed in a glass vessel, we have adhesive forces between them. and this is what causes a meniscus to form. Uh, it's due to the competition between cohesive forces, so like and like, so cohesive forces is in, the uh, in the water and cohesive forces in the glass, and competing against adhesive forces, so between glass and water. So water at, um, has a concave meniscus, so looks like a cave shape going down. Um, because of hydrogen bonds being present, and also bonds between the silicon dioxide, which is in the glass, and the water. So the, the, bond, uh, the, the forces between the, the water molecules and the glass are stronger than those from the water in itself. So that's why we get a concave, a concave meniscus, because the, the water likes to, bind, uh, to have, interact with the silicon dioxide and it's stronger, so it's gonna pull it to, to the silicon dioxide and less so to the water inside the, inside the tube. So we're going to have some of it slipping up, making the, uh, making the meniscus go down in shape like that. But mercury, on the other hand, has a, a convex, so convex meniscus, so it's gonna pop up because the cohesive forces in the metallic bonds in the mercury so in here, our cohesive bonds um, are stronger than the weak dispersion forces between the mercury and the silicon dioxide. So that means there's more forces going into the mercury, so into the tube here, and it's pulling it all to get towards itself. And not the, the forces between the silicon dioxide and the mercury are not so strong, so it can't overcome that, and that's why we get a little bubble on the top. Next, we're looking at surface tension, and this is a measure of cohesive forces at the surface of a liquid, and this re resists the increase in surface area. 
Molecules in the bulk of a liquid experience intermolecular forces in all directions. So under the water, we have a molecule of water and it's going to be attracted in all directions with all the water surrounding it. But molecules at the surface only experience attractive forces from below because there's only water at the bottom and only gas at the top. So all the forces are being pulled down. There's a, therefore a net force operating on the surface molecules. And liquids with a high surface tension tend to stay close. Those with low surface tensions tend to spread out and form a thin liquid film. So if you have a car that's highly waxed and polished, when rain drops on it, it forms rounded droplets on the surface because the cohesive forces are quite strong and pulls the water together to form a sphere. But if the metal surface is dirty, it breaks this up and it will tend to form a thin film on the car. And we measure surface tension by looking at the energy needed to increase the surface area of the liquid. So the more energy we need to put in means the higher the surface tension. Water here has 73 compared to hexane which has 18 and because we need to put lots of millijoules in to increase the surface area that means water is going to have a higher surface tension compared to hexane which doesn't need a lot of energy and therefore we can quickly and easily move it to form a thim, uh, film. High surface tension allows insects to walk on water without sinking like this guy here and high surface tension is due to strong hydrogen bonding between molecules. Glycerol, which is this chemical formula here, also has strong hydrogen bonding because of this group here, the OH group. Um, hexane has a low surface tension due to weak dispersion forces between the molecule because it's a nonpolar molecule. And this, is, this diagram here is just to summarize everything we just said. Uh, water molecules in the middle of the droplet experience um, experience attractive forces all around it in all directions so it's going to be equal but water molecules on the surface of the water uh, droplet are only experiencing attractive forces into the middle so there's only attractive forces going down here but nothing on the top here so that's why we get strong forces pulling it into a sphere shape we also have adhesive forces between the wax here and the water and because it's weaker that means we're not going to get any thinning out of the fill, uh, of the water droplet. We're going to get a spherical shape. So all the water molecules are pulling it in and it's overcoming the attractive forces between the wax and the water. Lastly, we're looking at viscosity. It's the measure of a liquid's resistance to flow. So viscous liquids such as hot tar or honey flow quite slowly, but petrol flows quite quickly when we pour it from a bottle. Water is not very viscous uh, as it flows quite rapidly, so the higher viscosity means it goes very slow, um, but it because it has a short, it's quite small. But hydrocarbon liquids such as hexane also can flow quite quickly because they're short. Glycerol is going to be quite viscous because it's quite long and it has hydrogen bonding which also increases the intermolecular forces but because it's long, it can get tangled up in each other and therefore it's going to flow slowly. So viscosity really depends on attractive forces between molecules, so hydrogen bonding will increase it, uh, dispersion forces will decrease it. Molecular shape, long molecules are going to get tangled up in each other and therefore it's going to be harder for them to move past and flow out. And temperature. If we increase the temperature, we're going to uh, decrease the viscosity because we're putting more energy in, make the molecules shake heaps, and therefore they can untangle and move about more, and therefore we can increase the flow rate. So when they're heated, liquids become less viscous because higher kinetic energy can overcome the intermolecular forces uh, that are attracting each other. So honey will flow better if you leave it out of the fridge because it's at a higher temperature. So when we look at the viscosities of a few liquids, so water, hexane, glycerol, ethanol, we can see that uh, glycerol has the highest viscosity with the largest number. And uh, water, ethanol is next because it's quite, it's a bit longer. Water is quite small, but it has hydrogen bonding, so it's going to attract uh, a lot more than, say, the other two. And hexane is the least because it's only dispersion forces and it's quite short. So when we're looking at the properties of water, we 
we're looking at cohesive forces, so like and like, adhesive forces, like and uh, so unlike, so water and glass. We're looking at the viscosity, how, f how much it can flow. And then we're also looking at the surface tension. So with that, we can answer a few questions. So question eight, define the following terms, cohesion. So remember what's cohesion? Cohesion is the attractive force between like and like. So cohesive forces are forces that act between the same particles. Next, surface tension. So surface tension is a measure of cohesive forces at the surface of a liquid that resist uh, the increase in surface area. So it means high surface tension means there's quite strong cohesive forces pulling it together and therefore we're going to have high surface tension. So like the water has high surface tension and that's why we can get insects walking on it. Lastly, viscosity. So viscosity is a measure of the liquid's resistance to flow. So high viscosity is like honey, it can't flow very fast, but low viscosity is like uh, petrol because you can pour it out really easily. So question nine, explain what causes surface tension in a liquid. So in explain, we need to also give the reasoning behind why it's happening. Surface tension is a measure of the cohesive forces, so like and like, at the surface of a liquid that resists um, the increase in surface area of the liquid. So like and like particles are going to attract it, each other and at the surface of the liquid it's all pulling down, not in the, around to the gas. So molecules in the bulk of the liquid experience intermolecular forces in all directions. So remember the diagram with the water molecule in the middle has uh, all the arrows pointing in all directions. But molecules at the surface only experience the molecules below it. So water molecules below it can attract it down but the gas on top doesn't do anything. Therefore, there's a net operating uh, force on these surface molecules downwards. So due to the unbalanced forces, because the, the surface ones only have it down, uh, there's a surface tension of a liquid. So next, question 10, compare the viscosity of water to that of other liquids. So viscosity is the flow of the material. Uh, the viscosity of water is higher than most other liquids because remember we were looking at it, even though it's quite small, it has a lot of hydrogen bonds which pull it together making it more viscous than say hexane. So question 11, given the following information in the table, list the three liquids in order of increasing viscosity. So viscosity we were looking at the ability to flow and that was dependent on temperature it was also dependent on the size of the molecule, but also intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces also give us an indication about the melting point and boiling points. So when we have low melting points, such as acetone, it means there's weak forces in between intermolecular forces. But when we have high um, melting and boiling points, it means there's lot, uh, strong intermolecular forces. And also strong intermolecular forces mean we get higher viscosity. So based on this, we can find out what, how strong are the intermolecular forces and then we can then decide the viscosity based on that. So first of all, glycerol. Uh, glycerol has quite a, a high melting and boiling point, so it's going to have strong bonds, uh, strong intermolecular bonds. And strong intermolecular bonds means high viscosity. Next down is water at 0 and 100. It's less than this but more than acetone. And finally, acetone being the less viscous. So in summary, all the properties of water, such as adhesion, cohesion, the surface tension, and um, the viscosity, are really important in life maintaining functions. So this is an example of how, how does the water from the soil get to the tops of the trees. It's because of adhesion forces, cohesion forces, the surface tension, and the intermolecular forces between uh, water that allow it to get dragged up to the top.